Hi, everybody. It is Andy from Snow Camps Europe here with Paul from the Ski Instructor Academy in Capron with another podcast. And this time, I think we're talking about the Birmingham Ski Show, Paul. We are. We love it. Wow. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You just said you love it because last year you didn't really have a great deal of good to say about it. Well, you know, I'm allowed to change my mind. No, actually, um, no, we had it. We had a good show. Um, it is based in England, obviously, which, okay, the side effects to everything. But yes, it was a, no, it was a good show. We, um, we had a good position. It was, you know, very central as well. And um, they sort of said to us that it was about 30% bigger than last year. I, I was trying to weigh that up. I, I don't know whether it meant like bigger as in... Number of people or... No, 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 no. Because obviously space. this was floor space. Yeah. Which might be true if you counted all the empty floor space. But I, I, I don't know. But the guy, um, Steve, that I met down there who runs it on behalf of, um, I think it's Raccoon Media or something like that, um, really switched on guy. He, he did come in to do the Telegraph actually before the Telegraph give up on it and stopped all those type of events um and he was sort of the guy that said look guys in the telegraph like you know this is not working the exhibitors aren't happy the people aren't happy coming in um and obviously that's when telegraph then binned it all off and then raccoon took over and they did the first show in birmingham last year um and yeah it was it was busy um there was enough traffic going through there was um, enough to do in the show i'll, I'll stick some photos up actually in this podcast because i do have some um and it was to me it was obviously worth a visit because we were there <laughs> that was good um but I, I don't know i mean i always see these like little startup things and little you know we have a relatively big stand in 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 picture of what what's going on there but there's always these like one by ones in yeah. the corners and stuff like that and i see them every year selling pulleys that they've got from china or something you know and they're, they're hoping to be the next big sort of brand name or something and i'm sure you know one in three million breaks it and gets and gets you know gets the brand pushed forward but most of them you see them one year and they're gone the next year yeah, you, know, yeah, like, yeah. you get all these like people selling you know like a couple of years back it was all trackers you know, stick trackers on your kids or trackers on your ski instructors. Oh, okay. I mean, nowadays, you know, what's the use of that? You can do it with your phone. Yeah, you can do everything, yeah. you know, and um, or locks are the favourite one. They love locks, you know, for your, your boards and skis and okay. stuff like that. And um, yeah, and then, then food's a big new thing as well, you know, where they're, they're trying to push all their, their products of like, you know, the, the energy bars, this and energy drinks, that. And you see all sorts of weird stands there. There was a lot of the um, usual ones for feet, a lot of feet, feet, super feet and, um, you know, fitting boots. And there was quite a few of them selling different footbeds and stuff. You know, my favorite footbeds. <laughs> that's, that's not so hard. That's not so uh, you know, I was like, but there was, because um, who was talking to me? Uh, yeah, it was Warren. It was Warren Smith and I were having a talk about something. And we were talking about, um, he was talking about the, 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 the ski boots and stuff like that inside. And they were on about the actual fitting. And I was explaining, you know, as I do waffle on about foot, feet fetish and talking about the bones and structures and then footbeds and stuff. And, you know, I was being a bit derogatory towards the fact that, yeah, you know, most people need to be cautious about how they're getting their, their, their ski boots fitted here. Um, but there was a company, I said, that was worth visiting in the show that had Nothing to do with the, the footbeds, but we're selling actually products. I've got a photograph, actually. I'll stick it up as well. Um, I'll flag that. And <clears throat> the, they were selling actually products which strengthened, like, for example, your tibialis. Yes, your shin, your shin muscles, uh, if you like. They were strengthening hamstrings, strengthening uh -huh. eccentric, concentric movement with the hamstrings. They were stre strengthening, you know, your, your gastrox and your soleus. And they were selling bits of gym equipment, which was weird. And I, I looked at it and thought to myself, nobody probably realizes that, that that actual product there is a million times better than the, the footbeds that have been sold around the place and stuff, because that's what people should be doing. A footbed is just a plaster. It doesn't solve the problem. And a couple of 
that people had come to see me on the in the the stand and were asking about feet problems that I had, like plantar fasciitis and things. And I was explaining the same things, and I, I pointed them anyway to my feet fetish video of ski boot fitting, which you guys can can find on the the YouTube channel. And um, so yeah, and then there was the slope. They had a, a slope. They had a skating rampy thing. They had trampolines. So it was a bit of entertainment for the kids and stuff like that. Um, so all told, pretty good. Okay. Up here, hey, any complaints about paying for car parking? Did you, did you have to pay for parking again? Well, I don't know, because we were in the Hilton, which was across the road. So it had a car park. It had a car park, yeah. Because that was a big gripe last year, wasn't it? That people didn't expect 15 quid for parking for the day. Jeez, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe they did, but um, I, I didn't hear anybody complaining about ticket price or anything like that. Um, what's great is actually next year when we sat with the, the organisers and stuff, they're going to for next year, sort of bookmark the, the ski, the, the snow show by having a, a show in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be the following weekend, a show in back in London. Okay. And in the middle, there'll be all these like satellite events going on. So it becomes a whole sort of nine day period of, of snow related activities to promote the industry of skiing, boarding, and anything actually snow related. Um, and we're going to get involved with that as well with uh, myself and Warren Smith are going to be doing something. Um, so there's going to be activities and it means I have to be in England for almost nine days. It's going to be like, what am I going to do? So it should be quite interesting and they're definitely trying to promote it and they're getting better, better sponsorship, bigger, bigger companies interested because of this. And I think it'll be well worth visiting. The best thing is, is now, you know, you guys who are, North can get the Birmingham show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South, you've got the London show. You don't have to travel so much. And, and these satellite events or satellite, whatever you call it, are they going to be all over the country or just in between Birmingham and London? No, I think they're, they're, they're in lots of different <coughs> locations. It's still in the planning and the prep stage, okay. um, but they're going to be in different locations and they're going to be aired as well. So it's not like you have to physically go to, I don't know if it's happening in a snow and rock or it's happening in a in a certain shop or something, then you can watch in on it online and stuff. So it, it, it sounds like a, a great idea. Um, and it's certainly going to help promote the industry, you know, for tour operators, for different ski resorts and stuff. Because that's what we haven't seen since COVID. Previously, for example, in the London show, you would see these huge stands with, let's say, Tyrol. Mm -hmm. Huge section, which is all Japan. And then a huge section of Norway or something like that. That they've really shrunk that down like completely. I mean, Tyrol wasn't even there and Japan, I think there was one little stand where some looked like more like a private operator was doing something in Japan. Mm. So I feel like all of them are coming back now. They feel more comfortable and that, that will increase the, obviously the, the floor space as well again um, and, and give more opportunities for people to see other things. And um, for those that were interested in going to purchase boots and uh, jackets and whatever miscellaneous stuff for skiing and boarding there was opportunities there and um, no doubts about it. it as I've said many times before I generally advise people to purchase things like hardware like ski boots for example in a resort where they can control the environment a bit better and they can test them on snow I always think it's difficult you know in a warm environment in you know just putting a pair of boots on that you can't really test for weeks and weeks later I mean people buy them and don't use them till January or February mm -hmm. um, and then across from us was a, a big helmet brand um, Rurok is it I think that's these are the guys with like a face mask on the front, <clears throat> are they? Yeah, um, which was interesting because that's I, I didn't really know much about them but Chris one of our sales team was saying that Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, they, they have the face mask. And I said, oh, well, it's interesting because all the helmets they're displaying on this side don't have the face mask on. Okay. And I says, maybe they've realised that actually people don't want those face masks on them because they're a bit like... I've got I've got a client that's got one, albeit he comes he comes with a group and he snowboards and the rest ski with me. So right. he's he's kind of he's a snowboarder, but it almost looks like a stormtrooper's hat. Yes. Yeah. And which actually one of the, the sales guys from the Rurok group was wearing one, he wander around with it on, and it did look like a like a stormtrooper. And I did think it was over the top, but 
Hey, I mean, I think, you know, Christmas, you know, they come off anyway. You can take that yeah, bit off. Yeah, you can take the whole front bit off as yeah, a piece. Yeah, so, but they were, they were chocker block, but mainly they were chocker block because they were doing giveaways and you could spin the wheel type thing and you could win one of the helmets or you could win like a hat or whatever. And as soon as you're doing giveaways, you're going to get every tire kicker in the place, you know, yep. they'd have people queuing all down the, waiting to put that email into the, the database, you know, which is what they're after. But I mean, most of it's tire kickers because they're never going to buy a helmet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was... People you know, like free stuff. Now, talk, like while stuff. we're talking about helmets, and this came up, it just came into my head a few weeks ago, was rental helmets. How do we know when going into a shop and renting a helmet, if that helmet the previous week or weeks before had a serious hit and therefore should no longer be rented? Is it structurally sound? Yeah, because a lot of the cheaper helmets and the, re the rental <laughs> helmets are relatively cheaper helmets. Once they've had one hit and the foam is compressed by any amount, they say you should replace that helmet. Now, I don't ever remember seeing a helmet being returned into a shop and it being inspected. And I don't think anyone's going to go into the shop and say, there you go, Mr. Rental Man. I had a massive big fall yesterday and smacked my head. I've had a headache ever since. <laughs> you need to inspect this rental helmet. How do you inspect a rental helmet? You well, know, you, because you can't, be, do you put it in a special machine or do you just look at it? I, think, it, I think the first it? thing is a visual check, isn't it? To see if any of the, the foam is been compressed or got any grooves and marks in it, which is what they did when I took my non-rental helmet in after I'd smacked my head. Yeah. Um, but it's just a kind of a, you, if that helmet has been hit, and there is a good chance if it's been used by lots of beginner intermediates that it has had a hit, is it actually safe to rent a helmet? Or should you just go and buy a helmet? Whether you are a first time skier or second, third, fourth, whatever it be. If you're renting equipment, and we've said a lot of the time, buy your ski boots, rent your skis, you might then also want to rent a helmet. But I'm now thinking, you probably don't want to be renting a helmet. You do want to be buying a helmet. Yeah. So I mean, from, from my side, it's more to do with the fact somebody's head's been in it. It's like, do I really want that well, person's head that's been in that helmet? I've got a feeling that this came into my your head. helmet. Exactly. Um, I, I think this came into my head because I was either watching something or had seen something about bowling, temping bowling. Oh, God, yeah. And you know when you go temping bowling, you yeah, get the, the clown shoes. Yeah. And they always, the minute you give them in, they go, tsh, tsh, and they spray them. And they yeah. always smell quite nice yeah. when you get given them. So they do put in like an antibacterial thing because your feet have been in them and we yeah, know you've yeah. got problems with your feet. Um, <laughs> um, and that was, again, when have you ever seen a ski helmet get returned and it be sprayed or cleaned or disinfected? No idea. Like I say, I mean, it, it's we obviously encourage things? all our students are told they need to have a helmet. We won't ski with them yeah. without a helmet. And we always say to them, look, guys, if you're going to buy a helmet or vice versa with the goggles, make sure you bring the goggles around because they don't yeah, all make fit. It. Yeah. It, you know, and then having a helmet professionally fit, it's important because a lot of people buy it. You know, it's the old parent thing, isn't it? Oh, I'll buy the helmet two sizes bigger so he grows <laughs> into it <laughs> Just with his brain damage. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's one of those things that unfortunately as a parent, you're probably looking going, I'm not going to buy a helmet because next year I'd have to buy another helmet unless yeah. I get the helmet badly fitted <laughs> and think about mm. next season. So it's a lose-lose situation. I think you're right, Andy. I think what they probably need to do is there should be some sort of squeeze test or something machine that sort of goes, and goes yeah. this helmet is still sound. A little, bit like a, a little bit like the machine for binding. Yeah, maybe. you know, it tests it for yeah. you. Because I, th you I think know. I, for, for all kids get given a free helmet from most ski hires anyway, so there's no kind of cost implication there. But again, is that kid in a helmet that's safe? Adults, to rent a helmet, something like 35 euros this year, you can buy a helmet for 49, 50 euros. Yeah, probably and relatively decent one. Yeah, and as long as you don't then go and whack your head, that will be good yeah. for some, some years to come. Although I'm saying that, I know product prices of something, a lot of things have gone up. You know, if you you look, only last year and in for the, it was sort of static. We would always get a pair of decent titanium wood core race car or slalom ski mm -hmm. and you'd get a really good deal for about 399 to 450 euros i'm talking you know a top end ski and um, with the discounts you would get from ski instructor academy but now that's gone up 
this year, definitely. You're into 499. Mm-hmm. You, you, As you, a starting you, point. You're looking at about another 100 euros. Mm. You, you're struggling at even 450. It's sort of 499. Um, and that's the cost of living crisis, mm. definitely. Jackets, the same. I was up looking at the shell jackets and stuff like that. You know, if it's hard to find one under 500 euros. Yeah, I was, Just looking, for a jacket. I was, look, I was looking and the tea piece was about 499 that I could find. And it was kind of the colour and the style that you wouldn't want. You'd want the next one in the range, yeah. which was then... Five, uh, six, six, seven, eight hundred yeah, euros, hundred twenty-five or something. Yeah, I know. I mean, they yeah. charge like I was in there looking, thinking eight hundred euros just for the jacket, of which mm. there's going to be a six hundred euro pants on it, of which you use maybe, you know, unless you're a serious skier. But let's say a recreational skier might use it three times a year if they're lucky. If you're lucky, and then after two years they'll probably be going. Mm, oh. I probably want a new one. Yeah, the colour's not the right colour. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that was it, because when you looked online and you went into some of these sites that offer you last year's kit, you know, a, a high-end, let's say Sweet, which is a really good brand, you know, really good Gore-Tex, et cetera, you could pick it up for about 290 300 mm. instead of 650 700 So I would strongly advise people when buying ski wear, my, you know, and this is normally Andy's subject, <laughs> but I would say don't get a pattern. Go for a plain colour yeah. and you'll be generally happy because you can mix around then your pants and jacket and stuff and just go for plain colours. Mm. And you, in a shell, a nice heavy shell, because then you can just layer it up mm. underneath. There was, I saw a comment the other day, a lady was trying to buy a new pair of pants and she was like, where have all the bright colours gone? Um, yeah, it's true. Because they, they, it's they, they, I think last year as well, this year, it's very earthy colours, isn't it? It's it's dark greens, it's beiges, well, it's browns. Which and is true, when you think of skiing such a tree green, it's yeah. uniform, it's yeah. like camouflage, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you, um, can't, you can't see anyone when they ski past trees. <laughs> um, so, so beware, we're off to the expo uh, in November, it is, I think, this year. It's weird because... Um, it's a different time of year. It'll be next year. Uh, no, no, no. It's in Munich, the big one. This is oh, the you're going to ISPO? ISPO thing, yeah. The big what are you doing there? snow sh- thing where we buy our uniforms from there. Ah, okay. So you're going as a visitor rather than as, yes. a, as a stand. I oh. wouldn't go as a stand there. It's not the right place. No, it's kind of, it's not that kind of market, is it? No. Um, I mean, the ISPO is huge. You know, you look at Birmingham, show and snow, snow show thing. It's about a hundred times bigger than that. Yeah, is. this is a trade show, though, isn't it? Uh, yes, and I think this it is, is the biggest ski and trade show in Europe. But it's not just ski; it? it's sports, outdoor sports. It's yeah. outdoor sports. Yeah. No, it's indoor sport. It's, it's, indoor it's massive. Well. It's everything. Oh. Yeah, you can get everything there. Everything. So yeah, we'll. I think we're due next season. We'll update the uniforms, and it's then a decision to decide on, like you said, do we go back to colourful, you know, and do we stay muted? I don't know, but probably we'll go a bit more. A bit more out there, I would have thought next year. A bit more back to stronger colours, but yeah. If uh, but from my side, I think you know. Let's face it. You know, I'm wearing a black t-shirt. Goes with anything, you know. So you've got to be careful. As soon as you get like patches and yeah. patterns running across, ski I'm not bothered about the colour as long as the legs come in. The trousers have a short fitting, a very short fitting. Yeah. Andy's about a 22 inch leg. I think it's a little bit longer than that, but yeah, yeah. Are you sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so renting ski helmets, ah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's difficult because the kids growing so quick, but as an adult, I would yeah, say I would just, natural. I would just think about it. Maybe, maybe instead of spending 35 and getting one that potentially is damaged, spend 50 and buy one. Yeah, I, I would, I would probably say that. So, today, what would we tackle? We've, we've looked at the Birmingham show, which That's generally we've we'll looked at next year's show, which yeah. is also advertising online. Um, we've even looked at the ISPO in the show in Munich, which is in November, instead of when it normally is in January. And so we've talked early. about our rental helmet safe. We have. Anything to add, Andy? Nothing for the moment. Bye for now. See you later. Where are you going to go? I need to put that music in sooner because it takes ages. It's got a long <laughs> intro. And I've just hit the, the lyrics. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>